and you can just buy the cartridges, don't call them capsules. Hey guys, I'm Dan Jackson and this is my channel Dan's the Engineer. If you're new to this channel, it's good to have you here and if you're watching again another episode, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the benefits and the differences between the Testifier and the Solo 365. So, this is the Solo 365. It's a sort of neat little bit of kit. It's quite lightweight and it's one of their newest models. And this is the Testifier. This is the 1000 unit. There's a 1000 unit and a 2000 unit. I'll explain the differences. This 1000 unit tests smoke and heat. The 2000 tests smoke, heat and CO. It takes smoke cartridges, just like this one. And it is battery powered only. So you need to use one of the battens. This is a 2.2 amp hour battery which is a baton, I call them a nunchuck. So you just literally slot that in and that's ready to use. And this can go onto one of the no climb poles that detector testers do. This unit, it just tests smoke and smoke only. It doesn't test heat. So it's a smoke only tester. And again, it's battery, but the difference with this one, with the battery, it's not the nun nunchuck style. It's a lithium battery and it's just this neat little kit, so it's much more, it's much lighter and smaller. So what are the key features of both? And we'll sort of go through them. Now in terms of weight, bear in mind, if you're carrying this day in, day out, this is heavier than this anyway, without the unit, but bear in mind also, you have to strap a battery into this. So this one is, is much heavier, it is bigger. You can see, I mean, it is impressive um, how sort of nimble, but they're both robust bits, bits of kit. They're both battery. When you buy this, it just comes with the one battery that you charge up and the charger is just a USB lead that goes into it. You can charge it in the van or whatever. But these use the nunchucks. Always make sure that you charge your equipment the night before bed, before you're doing the test. You don't want to get caught short. Now both tests on both units are automatic. So as you can see, this is lighting up green. As soon as a detector enters the chamber, it senses it and it starts releasing smoke and this is pulsing so it goes on and off and you see there's smoke starting coming out of that. So it's automatic, you hold it up to the te detector and it starts releasing smoke and doing the test. And it's the same for the, the testifier. So the testifier does exactly the same, push it up to a detector, it senses that the detector is inside and it starts releasing smoke. So both bits of kit have a clearing function and what that does is once a detector has entered the chamber, it'll do the test, you pull it off, you wait for it to go green, you put it back on the detector, and it goes sort of a whitey blue, and it starts blowing smoke around the detector so it can clear it, so it stops it going back into fire and it, it gets rid of the smoke. Myself and Alistair, my colleague, we were on site doing a system takeover, and we had a bit of a play with both. So to turn this bit of kit on, you hold the on button, it lights up, and you're ready to go. So we're gonna test this smoke detector, which is a little bit too close to this light fitting. So I'm just going to hold it up, it's going blue, which means it's releasing smoke into the chamber. That's now gone into fire, so I'm going to drop it down and you'll see it will go green in a minute, which means it's ready to go again. So it's gone green, I'm going to put it back up, it goes, it goes whitish blue and what you do is just hold it below the detector and it blows smoke around the detector to clear of any excess smoke. So when you press silence and reset, it doesn't go straight back into fire again. So that's about enough. So I'm gonna to go, to, going to go to the panel now, press silence and reset. The Testifier does exactly the same. But this one, the difference on this is that it's programmable. So if you don't want to use the clear function, you don't have to. So sometimes that can speed up a little bit using a Testifier if you don't want to use the clear function because you can just put it onto smoke and you just put it up to the detector test it, take it away, go to the next one, put it straight up, whereas this one goes through the cycle of the, the clear mode. Now this unit is very basic. There's not much to it in terms of programming at all. Whereas this one is programmable. Because it's a heat 
and a smoke. You can change the settings, and again, I've done it on the Testify video, which I'll put a link above, where you can test smoke, and then you can change it to clear afterwards, so you take it down and it clears afterwards. You can also change the settings so that it's a smoke and then it does heat, so multi-sensors, this is, this is perfect for, because what you can do, and with the new standards, the way they've changed in terms of testing, you can put it up, it does a smoke test, you take it back down, you put it back up again, and it does a heat test. And then you can also take it back down again, put it back up and do a clear mode if you want to. So you have the ability to do that, or you can just do heat on its own, smoke on its own, smoke and heat, heat, clear if you want to. Whereas, if you want to do heat testing, you've got one of these, you have got to buy another bit of kit. So that's a bit of a downside to that. But again, I'm quite used to it, because I've been using the 330. I'm used to using, we've, we've either got this, which is the, this is a battery solo thing, so it just takes the batons exactly like this. So that's why I also used the mains heat detector. The downside of using the mains heat tester is that you have to drag a lead around with you on site. But again, quite used to it, and also a lot of sites that I work on, you know, the number of heats that are there, there's not that many, it's mainly kitchens, plant rooms, boiler rooms, things like that. So, it, so it's not crazy, and I don't, I don't find it an issue, but it is handy having the testifier, because you, you haven't got to worry about any of that. You just literally have the one kit, the poles, and job done. So this is the testifier. We're using this to test smoke and heat detectors and you have to program how you want to test the detectors. So I'm just gonna show you really simply on here. If there was a, a program already on this, you just hold down the X button, just hold down for a couple of seconds, let go. And then what I want to do is I want, I'm gonna scroll to heat, and then you just tick that, which it says one, so it's gonna do heat first. Um, and that's all I'm gonna do on this one. So now that's ready to go. All we do is hold it up to the heat detector. The sensor sees that it's in the chamber, so that's now going to heat up. And this is just a low battery heat test. You can set it for high temperature if you need to, but I don't want to drain the battery. So that's gone into fire now, I believe. Yep, there we go. And that's that's it, it's simple as that. So now we're going to go downstairs, uh, press the and reset on the panel. Now I have obviously done a video on this as well, which I'll put a link above so you can view that if you want to. You can do remote testing with both of these units. So with a testifier, you have to buy a separate unit, which is a remote control. And basically you put it up to the detector and you can remotely turn it on. And you might do that for aspirator and things like that, because this will not go off if it's just pushed up to a sampling point that's flush with the ceiling. And likewise with this, if you put it up to an aspirator, it wouldn't be able to detect that there's a sampling point in, in there as such. So what you can do is press like a time delay and then you can hold it up. So that's a sort of a, a nice little feature. So both of these are not aerosol based. This one takes capsules and this one takes cartridges. So the testifier takes this capsule and you buy them in packs of three. Averagely, we're finding approximately 500 tests per capsule. Now this takes cartridges, and it's these little capsules. Again, it's on the video that I've done on the Silo 365, and that just slots in there. Now you've also got a smoke generator on this one. You don't have that with the testifier. The smoke generator will need to be replaced after 12,000 tests. So that's another serviceable part that needs to be replaced with this. Now the cartridges for the 365, you buy them in a pack of 12. And we're finding we can get about 200 tests per cartridge. So that's the difference between these. We'll go into cost a bit later on. So the performance on one of these is better, in my opinion, than using the A3 cans of smoke that go in the 330. So straight away, that's a massive benefit um, because there's less wastage as well. Because the thing is, with the 330, you can push up and spray, but you might be spraying too much. Now, some of our clients have specified, we use this, or the testifier, so it's an automatic detection, because it only releases enough smoke to set off the detector. So you're not using any wastage, and you're not risking contamination of the devices. So 
one of my clients has said that they like the idea of that because what they're finding is is that people are using like sprays on some of their systems, um, just the handhelds, and they're just spraying the crap out of it, and it's causing issues. And sometimes they need to be replaced, and obviously they're chargeable. And one of my clients accepts that if we use this on a detector, providing we're doing a test properly, and it is a sort of a trust thing, if it doesn't go off within the one test, they fully appreciate and want and expect to pay for a replacement of a smoke detector. So I think that's quite a good thing, but providing it's not abused. Now one nice little feature that this has, which the Testify doesn't, is the LED light on it. So it shines up. Now you might, I was thinking to start with, ah, it's just an LED light. So when I spoke to detector testers about this, first of all, they actually raved on about the light as if it was a big thing. I was like, it's only a light. But actually it's quite handy. All right, so this is the Solo 365 and we've got a bit of an awkward space here where we can't really get inside the loft void there so it's got its handy little light so I'm going to try and attempt it from here setting off this uh, detector my arm is giving in <laughs> right that's gone off now so I'm gonna take that off and it should go green again there you go and I'm gonna put it back on just to give it a bit of clearance and that should be all right and we'll go down and reset the panel now this unit here has a gauge on how much smoke or CO is left in the capsules which is really handy to see because you can see when you obviously need to replace it and prepare. Whereas this one, it'll only tell you when you've used 90%, so it's not sort of as, as accurate, but it's not a problem because you should have a spare one to hand anyway. Now the warranty on both of these units is one year. They're very robust bits of kit and detector testers are a company that I feel we can all trust. So the warranty is one year, but the difference being outside of the warranty, if you break that, you gotta replace it. Now there's not too much that can go wrong with it, I mean it's got a fan inside and obviously there are electronics inside that could go faulty, but it's quite a new product so I've only had it quite, you know, a number of months now. So let's talk about costs. These take capsules and you buy packs of three, this takes cartridges and you buy packs of 12. A pack of three costs around about £95, so if you work that out, it works out to be about £6.50 plus VAT for 100 tests for this unit. This one, I'm finding the cartridges cost about £15 each, and bear in mind you've got to buy 12, but that works out to be around, provide, providing we get 200 tests out of that, that works out to be about £7.50-ish for 100 tests. So they're, they're quite similar in terms of cost. Now for the important part, this costs around about £420 plus VAT, and it depends obviously where you get it from, so please don't quote me on that, it's just approximate figures. But bear in mind, this can't do heat. So in addition to that, you might need to spend another 220 pounds plus VAT on the mains heat tester, or you can get the, the battery heat tester with a kit with the, uh, the batteries with it, um, the charger and everything else. That can cost about 500 pounds, but bear in mind, that doesn't include the poles. The poles are extra, and you can get kits, so you're better off buying a kit, but you can buy all these separately as well. So the testifier, now bear in mind, this does smoke, it does heat. Um, you can pay more for the CO, but for the smoke and the heat version, which comes as a kit with batteries charged a lot, um, no pole though, again, you're looking at about 750. So the poles, uh, it, can, it depends what size you want, but it can range from you know 80 pound up to 150 pounds, something like that, depending on what size you want. But you, like I said, you are better off getting a kit. Now Solo do do a really neat, um, uh, it's called an urban kit which is like a rucksack as well and you can get the shorter poles which is fantastic and um, I hope that I'm going to get my hands on one of those soon because they they really are um, a good bit of kit um, because these bags I mean I'm quite used to carrying this around but they are quite awkward and um, bulky whereas the the rucksack is is just perfect so which tester do I prefer 
Do I like this one or do I like this one? Now, they both have their pros and cons. I'm so used to using the Solo 330 because I've just used it for years and only really got involved in using the Testifier quite recently. I actually quite prefer using the 365 and because we do a lot of aspirator testing, it is handy with the ASD adapter. So I'm quite partial to this, but Alistair, my colleague, as you see in the video, he's been quite liking the Testifier. So it, it really is down to personal choice and I'm, I'm honestly sort of in two minds which one I prefer. So some of our guys, I will be getting this and others, I will be getting this kind of depending what they're for. So I don't think you can say that this is better in every aspect and I don't think this one is either, but I think what detector testers have done have provided you with options and there's so many different options. Like I said, you can use, if you're not doing much testing, you can use the Smoke Saber, which is a very low cost solution, which is nice and easy. But if you're doing testing and commissioning very regularly, I think these bits of kits are completely essential because don't forget, you can use the poles. So you haven't got to use ladders or anything like that. You just use the poles and you can go around on site. It's, it's quite straightforward. I mean, we go up London sometimes, we go on a train and you can just take the, you know, this kit. And that's why the Urban kit is perfect. But it's always worth speaking to detector testers. I'll put their details in the description below if you want to get hold of them. There's all different types of bit of equipment that can be used to test detection. And I've always used the Solo 330, which is this bit of kit. This is, um, I think this was my first one actually. Um, it's, it's quite dirty, um, should give it a clean, but you put an aerosol, the A3 aerosol, inside here, you slot it in, you push up to a detector and it releases smoke. The downside to that is that you can release too much smoke and you can create contamination. It can also, because of the way the spray is, it can be quite dirty. You can see inside here that it's all got loads of gunk in it. And um, I should wash this really, but this has just been in my stores for a while. So this hasn't been used in ages. So the A3 aerosol can, which is typically used for here, is, is now obsolete. They don't make it anymore and it's because of regulations to do with the environment because it's got certain chemicals in it that are harmful to the environment, which obviously we don't want. But they do do a replacement. So it's not detector tester changing things and making it obsolete on purpose and making it awkward for everybody. Detector testers do have a blog, which I'll put in the description below about why they've changed their, their aerosols and stuff like that. And also there's a, a video, which I'll put up here for you. But there are alternatives. So you've got the A5 aerosol, which is similar to the A3, but it's flammable. Now. That personally, to my company, causes a bit of a, an issue with storage and stuff like that. And some sites we work on won't allow that kind of thing. So it gets a little bit more complicated. But they do also do the A10S, which is a non-flammable product. I haven't actually used that yet. But one of the reasons that we've looked into more using either the 365 or the Testifier is due to the way that they do a test and they only release amount of smoke into the cup. So you don't get as much wastage. A couple of my clients actually specify that we use this for smoke testing because they've just seen it, they like it. The other handheld unit that you can use, which is just a spray, is the Sabre, which is, it looks it looks a bit like that, but then it's got an extension pole, and um, that's fine to use, that, that meets you know regulations these days. You may have seen another channel, Tom Nagy, he's used the Sabre um, on a few tests that he's done. It's a perfectly fine bit of kit, but if you're servicing day in, day out, you're better off using a proper tester, like one of these. But it's down to personal preference. There's all different methods and you know there's pros and cons about each sort of thing. So are you a Testifier fan or are you a 365 fan or even a 330 fan? Well, maybe you don't use either and you just use handheld smoke. Tell me what you think about them. Put, the, put in the comments below. So I'm gonna be putting up videos every Tuesday. So keep a lookout. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and hit the bell below to receive notifications when I upload a video. I'm trying to do more than one video a week if I can, it depends, but I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I'm doing a lot on fire alarm takeovers and maintenance and stuff like that. I'm also, Got a lot filmed um, in the US when I went there recently, so I'm filming some differences between the UK and the US, so keep a look out for that as well. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.